This evening, I'll be discussing the topic, amen, sure hope and help. Let me repeat that. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you have a sure hope. How many of you are talking lively and confidently? Say, I have a sure hope and help. Tell your neighbor that. I have a sure hope and what? And help. Now, the objective of this uh, discussion before we pray is born out of the fact that we as a nation and as a people are in a season where many have given up hope. Many have become hopeless in themselves. Many have become hopeless regarding the nation. The level of hope in our nation at the moment is at the lowest level. When you sit with 10 Nigerians, it will tell you or express their hopelessness. There are people that believe that nothing is working and nothing will work. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I have a sure hope. I know you are saying it or most of you are saying it because I ask you to, but if you truly have a sure hope, tell your neighbor, I have a sure hope. If out of every 10 Nigerians will tell you that the situation in this nation is hopeless, everything is hopeless, nothing seems to be working. But I have something to say to you that factually speaking, our nation is bleeding and many things seem to be falling apart. But as believers, our hope is not on any politician. The Bible says, woe unto him that put his trust in another man. So politicians, they are in the list of another man. The scripture even told us that woe unto him that put his trust in himself. So, as children of God, our hope is not on any man. Our hope is not even on ourselves. Because man can fail you and you can fail yourself. Is that true? So, why there is so much hopelessness in the world that we live in? As children of God, we should not be hopeless. Tell your neighbor, don't be hopeless. Things might seem so hopeless at the moment, but I have this word from the Lord to someone, things will turn around. This afternoon while praying for this service, the Lord said to me, there is nothing in the affairs of men that is permanent. Nothing. So whatever situation you are in in life is not permanent. Things will turn. Amen. Now what do we mean by sure hope and help? What do we mean by sure hope and help? It means having the confidence that God will surely come through for you no matter what. Let me tell your neighbor that. Having the confidence that what? What kind of people are these? Amen. Come on, can we say that? What is it? The confidence that no matter what comes my way, no matter what is going on at the moment, my God will come through for me. Someone shout that my God will come through for me. No, I, I, I don't like that. You're saying it like you are being coerced to, to say it. Can you say it confidently? Take a seat. No matter what is going on at the moment, in my life, in our nation, 
among us as a people, my God will come through for me. Shame if you believe that. Having that confidence that God may come through for you, no, God will surely come through for me. That is my belief. My God will surely come through for me. The confidence. Many have lost their confidence. Many have given up their confidence. Many are just living at the edge. Many are living complaining over everything. Praise the Lord. Are you still with me? So a sure hope and help is you and I having the confidence that God will surely come true for us no matter what. Amen. Amen. Romans 4 verse number 18 gave us an insight into what happens when you anchor your hope on God. Can we read together? One to go. Against all odds. Say that again. That means no matter what. Against all the prevailing circumstances. Against all the odds, all the things that seems to be pointing to the negative. Against all odds, when it looked, how? How did it look? What happened? Abraham believed, what did he believe? And what? And expected God to fulfill it. God will fulfill it in your life. Then read further with me. It says, he took God at his word. Tell your neighbor that take God, take God by his word. And then what did that lead to? And as a result, he became the father of many nations. You will become a source of blessing. Yeah. You will become everything God said you will. Yeah. Then let's read on. He said, God's declaration over him came to pass. And what was that that God declared over him? Your descendant will be so many that they will be impossible to count. Lift up your two hands. Your blessings will be too many to count. Yeah. At the moment, it seems like nothing is working. At the moment, the situation seems very hopeless. But the Bible told us against all hearts, Abraham took God by his word. I pray that someone you receive grace to take God by his word. Yeah. If there is one word that will not fail, God's word will not fail. Everything else will fail, but God's word stands forever. Isaiah 40, verse number 8, it says, The trees will flee, the flowers will fail, but the word of God, how does it stand? It stands forever. Psalm 33, verse number 20. I pray for someone here. God will come true for you. Amen. I don't know what the prevailing circumstances might be in your life. God will come true for you. Amen. Psalm 33, verse number 20, it says, the Lord alone is our radiant hope. You know, there is a hope, there is a gloomy hope. Someone will tell you I'm full of hope, but the person is looking depressed. No. But it says, the Lord alone is our radiant hope. The one radiant there also means glorious hope. And what? And we trust in him with all our heart. His wrap around presence we strengthen us. So it doesn't matter what is going on in our nation. It doesn't matter what is going on in our world. The wrap around presence of God will be your strength. Amen. I said the wrap around presence of God will be your strength. Amen. So make the Lord your God your only trust and trust him with all your heart. Let's look at what creates sure hope. Please like I told you the objective of this discussion is to help those who have become hopeless. Nothing happens in the life of someone who has become hopeless. And there are people who are in that state. Why will a man attempt suicide? Why will a man be depressed? When you get to the place of hopelessness, you don't see anything or any reason to live anymore. You don't see any reason to believe that the next day will be better than the present day. I pray for someone that your hope will come alive. Amen. Please, we are not saying uh, hope and help. We say sure. Sure means something that is certain. Something that is unshakable. Someone shout, I have a sure hope. 
quickly what creates sure hope. Please take note, sure hope. Abraham was sure. Abraham was confident. Abraham was certain. Against all hope, Abraham had hope. So what created the sure hope that Abraham had that we should also have in the midst of our sanctity, in the midst of people not sure of what their future holds, there are people who think that nothing good is going to come out of them anymore. But I have a word from the Lord to you that as you receive God's word into your heart, may you become sure of a better life, sure of a better future, sure of a better family in the name of Jesus Christ. What creates sure hope? God's word and promises. The word of God and the promise of God creates in us a sure hope. The Bible told us earlier in Romans 4 verse number 18, it says Abraham took God by his word. Abraham took God by his word. In a world of so much hopelessness, let's hold on to the word and the promise of God. It may seem like it's not working, but the word of God stands forever. Are you still with me? The world is full of so much things that are going on. Today this one, the other day this one. But in the midst of that, let's hold on to God's word and the promise of God. Amen. Amen. Genesis 15 verse number 1 to 5. It says, sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abraham or Abraham in a vision and said to him, Do not be afraid, Abraham, for I will protect you, and your reward will be great. Someone say, Amen. amen. God will protect you, amen. God will reward your faith, amen. God will reward your obedience. Amen. But verse number two, Abraham said something that most of us uh, say uh, quietly in our heart. Verse number two. But Abraham replied the Lord. How did they reply? Oh, sovereign Lord, what good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? Did you see that? I have money, I have cantos, I have silver, I have gold, but I don't have a child to call my own. What good is all of these things? And then let's read further and see why Abraham said that. He said, one, since you have given me no children, Look at his conclusion. Eliezer of Damascus, a servant in my household, will inherit all my work. Turn to them and tell your neighbor, it is not what you think. God has a better plan for your life and your future. Tell your neighbor, do not give up. It may have delayed. But God will surely come through for you no matter what. If you believe that, say amen. amen. I'm sure that at some point Abraham will sit down, look at his life, look at everything God had given to him, and he said to himself, well, if this is how God wants things to go, so be it. And I'm sure he may have been preparing Eliezer, his chief servant, to take over. Because in his own thinking, it's already too late. And there are a lot of us who are in that state. Well, I don't think it will ever work out again. I don't think anything good will ever happen in my life again. But God came and said this to Abraham. Are you still with me? Verse number three. Abraham went further. He said, you have given me no descendant of my own. So one of my servants will be my heir. Then see what the Lord said to him. And I'm sure God is saying the same to someone today. Yeah. Verse number four. Then the Lord said to him. Who said to him? I hope the media are going with me. And I hope you read with me. No. Someone shout no. no. Don't you about it anymore. You will not die a failure. You will not, die a failure. You will not live as a failure. You will not, a you will not end a failure. You will not end a failure. I, I love how the Bible puts it. Say no. That is, God disagreed with the conclusions or the assumptions of who? Of Abraham. Eliezer would take over. God said, no, that is not my plan. That is not what my plan is for you. Because you think you are too old. Because you think, well, you've waited for such a long time. 
Abraham, no. Your thoughts are not my thought. Your ways are not my ways. Am I communicating? Am I talking to the right people? There are a lot of you who are part of this meeting this evening. You've already concluded. This is December. It's already over. But do you know that one day can make a difference in your life? For men, it is too late, but not with God. The Bible says, with God, all things are possible. So if God said to Abraham, no, your servant will not be your heir. For you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. Touch or say, I will have my own. For Abraham, it was a child. For someone who is part of this meeting, yours might not be a child. Maybe something that seems to be missing in your life. For the Bible told us, Naaman was a mighty man of valor, but something was missing in his life. He had no good head. For Anna, no child. I don't know what that missing, you know, thing is in your life. I don't know what that vacuum is in your life. Will you learn to hold God by his word? Will you learn to hold on even when it seems the situation is getting more complex? Will you learn to trust God? Turn to your neighbor, God will come through for you. Oh, that seems to be too low. Can you say it very well? Then verse number five, God did something that I believe that God will do. Amen? I said amen. amen. That God will do for or do with most of us. Because there's a way you'll be looking at things with your own kind of eyes. And all that you will see is helplessness. All that you will see is hopelessness. So verse number five. Now God had told Abraham, no, no, no. You think that, uh, what is his name? Eliezer will be the heir. But no, that is not what I have planned for you. Then verse number five. The Bible says, then the Lord took Abraham outside and said to him. In other words... He took Abraham from the situation or the position he was in that made him to see only hopelessness, that made him see that there is nothing good that will come out of his life. He said, leave this environment. The reason why you are seeing things this way is because you are not in the right place. You are not in the right position. So he took him outside. And then he said to him, look up. In other words, he painted a picture of what the future holds according to his plans for Abraham. For some of you, one of the things I think you should do is to change the way you look at things. Perhaps you change the circle of people that you are in. Because you know why? Sometimes we see things with the lens of people's opinion. We see things sometimes with the lens of the opinions of men. We see things with the lens of mass media. This is what everybody is saying. But have you sit yourself down to say, what is God saying in the midst of what everybody is saying? There are a lot of believers who are carried away with what everybody is saying. What everybody is doing. I don't have a problem with that. But the question you should ask yourself is, in the midst of this one is saying this, this one is saying this, this is what we are doing, this is what we must do. What is God saying? So he took him outside and said to him, look, one thing about God, please stay with me. One thing about God is, he gives a promise and his promise paints a picture that you should always or constantly have in your heart until the promise of God paints a picture of the future you have in him, in your heart, you've not believed the promise. Now, for example, if I say a viral, the very moment, because the human brain processes words in, in an imaginary form with images, if I say a biro, if you have never seen a biro before, you can't picture how it looks. Amen. Amen. I know you'll be quiet because I am quiet. Amen. And I like it this way. Praise the Lord Jesus. If I say a knife, and you've never seen a knife before, you can't conceptual. Oh, Jesus. I hope someone get this tonight. If I say a yam, there's no way you will picture what yam is if you have never seen it. This is what God does. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm excited myself. Are you still here? 
when God says, I will bless you, what he wants you to have in your mind is a picture, amen, of a blessed man. If God says you will carry your own child, what God wants you to want, uh, what God wants you to have in your mind is a picture of a baby, amen, be cuddled by you. Are you still here? Amen. I said amen. If God says, I will bless you with a house, he wants you to have a picture of a beautiful house where you sit down on the city room and you are watching the television. If God says, I will settle you in your own home, he wants you to have a picture of a lovely home, a lovely family. You and your wife going on vacation. If you are still here, say amen. And your children running around. Hallelujah. He wants you to have that picture. Amen. Amen. Not the picture of you relocating back to your village. Not the picture of everybody coming around you and they say, sorry, sorry. God don't want you to have that picture. Are you with me? The question we all should answer tonight is, what picture do you have? Of your life and your future. And what created that picture? That image? How do you see yourself? How do you see your children in the next 20 years? How do you see yourself in the next 3 years? What kind of picture do you have? When you looked at your daughter. How do you see her in the next 20 years? See her in the light of what the Bible says. I and the children God has given to me. Someone shout. We have a word. Not for shame. Amen. You are the light of the world, not the light of a street. Amen. So see yourself and your wife and your children entering first class. Amen. And you are going on vacation on a foreign land. Amen. Say good amen. amen. I know you've not paid your house rent. I know. But God's word is coming to you to say to you, are you still here? That you are a city on a hill. is a metaphor for a position of honor. It's a metaphor for a, a higher life. Not a low life. Most persons are depressed because they have a wrong image. A wrong picture of themselves. So God said to Abraham, you know what? You'll be seen wrongly. Follow me. He took him outside. Do you know that one of the things I do when I, I needed to step up my faith is to watch beautiful scenes. Beautiful scenes. Because you know what? If you are sitting here, say amen. amen. When you set your eyes on beautiful things, beautiful people, beautiful houses, beautiful cars, it has a way of creating in you, amen, a sense of fulfillment, a sense of joy. Are you with me? Are you with me? I don't know whether I ever told you this story, but this is my life. As a young man who once in a while comes to time, but, you know, born and brought up in the village, I will on purpose, on what? Listen to me if you are here. On what? And we have 300 naira. 300 naira. And 300 naira was a big amount of money because some persons could do something with it. You know what I would do? I will leave the village. And my friends will ask me, where are you going? I said, I'm going to see my friends. I will come from the village. Enter public transport. I will get to town. Then I will head towards the airport. Then I will enter the airport. I enter their restaurant. And sit where people who are about to fly sit. And order for their jollof rice. And their chicken. I used to like Fanta. Can Fanta. Because those days, you know, the kind of things they sell at the airport is not in the open market. Those days you can't find canned drinks so, you know, easily. They are always either in supermarket or some places. 
I will order for it. I will sit down with those who are about to fly, eat my chicken, drink my fountain. I'll sit down and watch the way they walk, the way they behave, the way they talk. There is a way where the people talk. They don't even look like the way some of you are looking now. Amen. For, 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 for some of you, you need to go and learn how worthy people smile. Amen. Not, <laughs> no, they don't smile like that. They have their own way of smiling. You know, when all is well, there's a way it, it, it creates in you a balanced way and a civilized way. Am I communicating? I was telling my children yesterday that when you are poor, your prayer point is different. Your prayer point is a combination of all the suspicions you have had. All the dreams that you have had out of not eating very well. I used to hear. And all the heat and the mosquitoes and the malaria and the fever you have not treated very well. Amen. There's no way your dreams can be good with all of those things. With the mattress that look like a casket you are buried inside. I used to hear. There's no way you can have a good dream. I used to hear. With all the smoke emitting from the cooking in the same room. You, you can't have a heaven dream that way. Devil will be close to you. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? You know, so I told my children, I said, when you see worthy people when they are praying, they say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that there are times we don't pray aggressively, but if all the time, Father, Father, and God say, I'm not deaf, must you shout at me? I used to hear, Father, 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 where are you? Father, this is December. Father, don't let men laugh at you. Who are you to say God? Men will laugh at him. Do you know who he is? But all of that is a frustration of a man or a woman trying to express his frustration and channel it, channeling it towards what? Towards God. Father, 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 Father. By December 31st, if the promise don't come through, men will question you. Question who? It's an unquestionable God. I used to hear him. All of those expressions, they are as a result of your frustration, the pressure, the heat, the house rain, the school fees. Are you seeing here? And the agony. But if you watch that same person, if 100 million naira is in his account, the prayer point will change. Because you are praying from the place of victory, a place of success, not a place of survival. No. Prayer point will be like, Father, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your grace. I, I want to thank you for your goodness. You've been so good. Father, I, I thank you because I believe that the next breakthrough is sure. Thank you, Father. And sometimes when big men are praying, they have bottled water. And they take little, little water. For poor people, no. To drink water will stop God from blessing them. I used to hear. So they have to pray until all the salivas in their mouth are dried. And everything is dry. All of that will move God. You know, when you are going to beg a big man for money. Or beg for something that you believe that someone can give. You can't go wearing expensive dress. You, you package yourself in such a way that you appear pitiable, helpless, so that he can respond to you. But for God it's not like that. Because the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. It's not for you to appear before God and look hopeless. God will say, where is the hope that you have in Christ? So I will go to the airport. Kolisha. This boy, don't tame me for this thing. I used to hear. I'll be practicing it and it's working for me. I used to hear. And then you will, in the days of uh, Nigerian airways and uh, uh, some few Okada airways and, and then you will hear some announcement. I'll be listening. Then I will buy Ebony magazine and some other things. I used to use one perfume called Malaysia. I would buy it from a supermarket. And I used to use one soap. I can remember the name. When I'm taking my bath in the open bathroom, you know, when I'm in the bathroom, path front around it, all the people are around will be holding their no passive in it. I used to live, I used to hear, when my contemporary were carrying chewing stick like cheap as in here, 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 here. No, I wasn't doing that. I have to buy Colgate. The Colgate is the one you press from the top with my toothbrush and my clean glass. I've been practicing how to be a big man for a long time. And when I'm doing that, some of my contemporaries and even those who are elderly will turn around and say, you could do like say in a big man, a boner. You don't know, not be big man, bomb me, but I get big mind. I used to hear, big man, not be bomb me, but I get big mind. I have eyes on big things. I used to hear, some of you are looking at me, you know why you are still where you are? Because you have never set your eyes on things that are beyond what, where you are. You've never had a mindset. You've never, you know why you don't have big friends? Because your mentality is not allowing you to relate with them. 
Because when you are around them, it's to beg and beg and beg and beg and beg. I used to go to you wear this shoe, I will take it all. This bicycle, you, do you see me? They say no. This, this, and that's why you go to their house and they set the dinner for you. All kinds of food prawns are there. This one are there. When a big man set a table for you with all kinds of food, they didn't say you should eat all. They did this so that you can have varieties. But when you have a poor mentality, after you are eating, 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 you adjust your bed. That is not enough. Then you ask that, do you have back or back? Are you still here? So that you can pack enough for tomorrow's survivor. Are you still here? You see, most times, the reason why most of us behave the way we do is because our thought has become a problem. And because of the things we set our eyes on. So God said to Abraham, you can remain in this condition. Come out! Now look at the valley. Look at the stars. Don't look at the things at the bottom. Look at the stars. The question that you ask anyone who is part of this meeting this evening is, where is your focus? What are the things you look at? How do you look at life? What is your outlook about life? How do you see yourself? How do you look at life? You eventually become how you see things. How you see yourself. You are the reality of the picture you have about yourself. Am I communicating? See yourself as being helpless in need of help. That is the attitude you will put forth, looking for who will bail you out. Amen. I told the brother, I said, you and your friends are going on this trip. Pay for all of them. Do what? Pay their transport fare. Pay for it! And he said, I said, shh, pay for it. When you die with the great, have a great mind. Your pain for them will pass a message across that you are not a parasite. When people give you a gift, receive it with joy, celebrate it, but have a mind of always thinking of what also can I give. If you are a father, watch your children, how they treat one another. The one that sacrifices the most for the interest of another is the leader. In case you are to hand over anything, don't hand over anything to a grabber. If you are still here, say amen. amen. How do you see things? How do you see yourself? How do you see the next five years of your life? So let's, let's quickly do this. Okay, I think I've not uh, dwelled on that too much. Because it's important that we address this because a lot of believers are seeing themselves wrongly. If you see yourself as a, as a failure, that is not you. Say amen. amen. You see yourself with your file on your shoulder or your armpit or rather. Going about looking for a job. That is not all you, who you ought to be. Education that prepares you for occupation is the worst form of education. Education should create to you a mindset to be a creator. That's why the less educated people are employing the educated ones. Because the educated ones in their thinking is that I have the qualifications. And the only thing your qualifications are tied to you to is occupation. Occupation where they will pay you salary at the end of the day. Because you had a good education, but you have no vision. Someone say, I will look up. Oh, shout it very well. Don't be like those who just sad and like they're being passive. Come on, can you, can you say, I will look up? There are people in this meeting, whatever we are saying, that doesn't relate with it. But you will remember someday that a word came that you stop seeing yourself the way the world sees you. Stop seeing yourself the way men see you. Low self-esteem. And if there are too many low self-esteem people, they cover it up with a kind of look and appearance and aggression and defensive mechanism. The day you start seeing yourself the way God says you are, or the way God sees you, your confidence will. Amen. amen. I said, amen. amen. Let's do this and we'll pray. So look up into the sky and count what? The stars. If you can, that is how many 
descendant you will have. Someone you are about to have blessings you cannot count. Don't say that email like your neighbor. Say it very wild. Come, Abraham. Come, 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 Lord. Come, come. This environment you are in is the reason why you are seeing Eliezer as your hair. Follow me. Look. Have you seen those stars? Yes, sir. That is it. If you can count them, so shall your offspring be. Stop looking at the things the world is looking at. Stop looking at the situation. My brother, when I didn't have one room, I knew I would be successful. I said it, not to you, were not my contemporary. I said it to my contemporaries. I told my friends. They will laugh at me. They will make me feel like I am just being boastful. But I was so sure because I saw it. Someone shout, I am for the top. Don't look at your neighbor. Some people may not need as soon as you see getting money from your dad, you still have some whatever thing you wouldn't need. But someday, when you are all alone in this world, you will remember that the only one that should be the hand call of your hope is who? Is God. Have you ever been there? Okay. Have you ever been there? How many of us have been there? Quickly, Psalm 119, verse 49. The partial translation as well. Okay, can we read together? Can we shout? You want to go? Lord. Never forget the promises you have made to me. He will never forget. Why? For they are my hope and confidence. Where lies your hope and confidence? Oh, come on, shout it. Where lies your hope and confidence? The promise of God. The word of God keeps you going. It keeps you on track. Everything seems to be falling apart. But your con See, don't rely your confidence. I had the relative who traveled abroad about 20 something years ago. And that relative became my hope. See, when your hope is on man, you will soon die. Because the man you hope on may not even have hope in himself. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Until one day the Lord said to me, listen to this. He said, anchor your hope on me. I wanted to actually come here with something. Okay. But I, I, I think I did remember to do so. Anchor your hope on me. How many of you are aware that you will have foreigners work in your establishment? Amen. Shout that amen very well. Amen. I'm about to say something now that some of you may be surprised at. Some of you here, your teachers will come and ask you for help. Amen. Say that amen very well. Amen. They will come to your organization and say, <laughs> how are you, Mr. Ifai? I was your teacher in the university, your lecturer. Uh, please, can you help me? That's where you will not know that when you are helped by God, you become the helper of men. Yeah. Celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Celebrate God helping you. <laughs> Quickly, this is my last slide. How to receive help in hope. And they will rise up and pray. We are looking at secured hope and help. That means having the confidence that God will come through for you no matter what. Abraham was well advanced in age. Already old. Yet he believed that God will come through for him. So how to receive help in hope? Because the only time you can find God's help is where you anchor your hope on who? On him. When you are hopeless, you can't find help in God. So, how do I receive help in hope? One, let Christ be in you. Shout faith. Let Christ be in you. The crisis of life is so tough, my brothers and sisters, that the more you grow or the more you matured in life, the more you will have an understanding of what I'm saying now. Amen? amen. I said amen. If I was taught this message 40 something years ago, it would make no sense to me. But now I can see it that life is full of crisis. Tell your neighbor that. Forget all the social media stunt you are seeing, all the deceptive things that people are doing. There are people hunting. 
There are people bleeding. Forget makeup. Forget some person's makeup is to hide their pains. Amen. Amen. Let Christ be in you. Colossians one verse number twenty-seven. Let's do this quickly. Colossians one twenty-seven. Without Christ in you, life is full of crises. With Christ in you, the crisis will still come. But it will come through for you. It's not that when Christ is in you, there will be no crisis. Christ in you, crisis will come, but Christ will be your sure foundation. Christ will be your sure hope. Don't let any preacher tell you that with Christ in you, there will be no crisis, nothing will go wrong. No, no, no. Some things will go wrong, but God will come through for you. Can you say amen? amen. Colossians 1.27a, it says, Living within you is a Christ who floods you with the expectation, in fact, I say with the hope of what? Of glory. So Christ in us is what? Is the hope of glory. Two, don't build your hope on men. Let me shout that very loud. No, I, I can hear that. For those of you online, those of you in our branches, can you shout it very well? Don't build your hope on men. Don't build your hope. Listen to me, for those of you who are parents, if there's anything you should tell your children, tell them not to build their hope in you. There are children that suffer the loss of their parents, either of their parents, and that was the end of their lives. Because their parents built the children's hope on them. You are a mortal being. You are, a mortal being. You are not immortal. Your life journey will end. Let your children, teach your children to know how to put their hope on who? On God. Yes, God will use you. God will use some others. But God should be the foundation of one of their hope. Isaiah 60, verse number 11. Please, let's do this quickly. Because today, I see someone, your hope will come alive. Yeah. Your hope in God will come alive. Yeah. And you will find help in him. Yeah. Don't build your hope. Don't build your hope on men. Psalm 60, verse number 11, the Passion Translation. Uh, it says, can we read together? Give us a father's help. Shout that very loud. How? When we face our enemies. For to trust in any man is an empty hope. Has that ever happened to you before? Come on. Has that ever happened to you before? You know, I used to know a guy who works in NPC. You know, the guy was so rich and all of that and he gave me a lot of assurance, promises. Your ministry has blessed my life so much and all of those things. And then, you know, for us as human beings, there's a way we rather trust in men than God because men we see and we know what they have. This guy was so rich. If had every year, he take home, not salary, some of them would be around 40 something million. <laughs> and then he's giving me this assurance. Pastor, these are not, and he was really doing it. One day, the Lord said to me, since all your hope and expectations is on this man, what happens when anything goes wrong? I didn't know what he was saying. Then at some point, there was crisis in his establishment and all of that, and he was found one thing, and they sacked him. So the Lord reminded me again. You see your God? Because there is a guy who, if he's giving you a million naira, it's, fun, it's nothing. Now, did I rejoice that that happened to him? No. But that simply reveals that no matter how powerful a man is, he's still a man. Come on. Are you still here? You know, when you visit uh, people when they suffer the loss of their loved ones, you see them cry. There's nothing wrong with that. They cry. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. This cannot be. This cannot be. 90% of the time, it's not for the person. It's for what the person represents in their lives. And you'll be here. So, who will not train these children? Who will not pay the school fees? You see? That is it. He washed my hand and my foot and my leg. You were wrong. Don't make man your foot, your hand, and your leg because God gave you your own. Come on, nobody's talking to me. I know, I see the way you are looking at me now. You know why? Because most of you have built your hope on your relatives abroad. Some of you have built your hope on your children. Some of you, you build your hope on your business. 
He says, for to trust in any man, including your occupation, is what? Is an empty hope. Empty hope because it can fail. Some of you have built your hope on your good grade. We go see. Good grade is good. But ask God for grace. Because the race is not for the good grade. Because we've seen people with good grades that didn't get anywhere in life. Anchor your hope on God in loan. No, not, not on any mortar bin. Can you say amen? amen? Come on, can you say amen? amen? Three. Have to receive help in hope. Have God alone as the anchor of your hope. Let me repeat that very quickly. That seems to be very low. I, I know a lot of you are fasting, but don't pretend like you are about to die because you are not dying. Say it very well. Say it very well. Let your voice be louder than your neighbor's own. Have God alone. Can I tell you one thing I hate to see? Whatever I am to you, maybe at some point you needed some help I gave to you. Don't put me in the place of God. Because I can fail you. And if I even know that you have put me in the place of God, I will intentionally fail you so that you can turn to God. Am I communicating? Come, am I communicating? I will intentionally fail you. Because God will always fight anyone that takes his place in anybody's life. Tell your neighbor that very quickly. The moment you take the place of a God, I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to be here for you. God says, eh. Hey. So you are his ever present help. And another name for God is that he's a jealous God. And his glory will share with no man. That is why certain people that have put you in the place of God, as you give them help, give them help, they don't pray again. They don't trust in God again. They don't look up to God. God will frustrate you so that you and the person you are helping will be frustrated. So that you will be remembered that you are not a Shaddai. You are still a man that can die. Pastor, pastor, you see, you are my leg. You are my foot. God forbid. I can never be. Because you will kill me before my time. See, my uncle, my uncle, my uncle is everything to me. No wonder he died. Because the burden was too much. He couldn't carry it. God is the only one that can carry your burdens, no matter how strong or how heavy it is. He cast all your bodies on who? For what? Yeah, those of you, this period now, your ladies are brought, you won't allow them to have space. All the lies in this world you have cooked. You can even go to the hospital and put drip and say, I want to die. They say my kidney want to fail. They need 500,000 for, for kidney transplant. You don't even know how much for kidney transplant. You lie. I, I'm telling you, there, there are a lot of silly things that people do just to get money. Amen? Everyone is quiet. I said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Have God alone as the anchor of your hope. Psalm 142, verse 4 to 5. Read this with me. Come on. Oh, please read it loud and clear. Because someone, this is a life class and we are going to pray. Want to go? Read with me. If there is anyone who we help, but what happened? But there is no, there is no, there is no one who takes notice of me. I have no hope of escape. And no one cares whether I live or die. Has that ever happened to you before? No, this is a church that, that has never happened to anyone. Has it ever happened to you before? You cook all the lies. You wrote letters. You took time to construct the message. You even put the, 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 emo, is the emoji, you call it now? The emoji of tears running down your face. Put 15. And you put the one that you were like this. You were even in casket. They opened it, they didn't reply. You know you are finished. Those who replied said, even me, I have my own share of problem. God don't know you that you need to look away from my uncle, my cousin. My cousin in America has problem that you do my passport. That is coming to pick me because you are a luggage. Are you still here? So you are waiting for 10 years for him to come and pick you. To pick you like a container. Amen. Then look at what he said. Verse number five. After men had failed him, after everything has failed him, so what did he do? So I cried out to you, Lord, my only hiding place. You are all I have. My holy hope in this life. 
my last <laughs> verse 7 Psalm 39 verse 7 we're going to rise up and pray somebody after for the first time you are going to cry like blind Bartimaeus Jesus show no daddy opticians have failed me my gynecology has failed me amen, amen. the gynecologists have failed me Lord medicine has failed me the operation didn't work. They said it's fibroid. They removed the fibroid. Yet nothing is working. Lord, you are my last chance. Amen. Amen. Psalm 39 verse number 7. What does it say? And now, God, I am left with one conclusion. What is that conclusion? My only hope. <laughs> Uh, my only hope is to hope in you alone. What else can we do to find help in hope? Pray without anxiety. Tell your neighbor that. I have one more point then we'll close. Can you say it very well? How do you pray with anxiety? You are praying, no, but you are, you are restless. Father, no, Lord. I want, no, 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 no. God don't answer prayers like that. Pray from the place of quietness. It says, be still and know that I'm one. I'm God. You know, I, you know, as a pastor, I've experienced this over and over again. Pastor, come. Pastor, my baby. Pastor, my baby. And once you are in that realm, I will pray. Even if I'm going to pray, I will say you out. Because God will not answer prayers that is prayed with what? With anxiety. You know, pastor, no, 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 no. I have children, biological children, and spiritual children. If they have to come to me to ask me for a thousand naira at my level, they will say, Daddy, I don't know. One thousand naira. I know that something is wrong with them. Because one thousand naira is not an issue. I can give that to you. You are a child of a king. You are a child of the almighty God. So prayers, Father, 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 Lord Jesus. I remember some years ago, a child had convulsion. I went to go and pray for the child. I just gave my life to Christ. We prayed and prayed and prayed. I prayed and prayed and prayed. I prayed and prayed and prayed. As we are praying, we are looking at the child. We are looking at the child. And the child is getting darker. Getting darker. We are praying. The immature brother came. He just was saying, what is the matter? We told him that the devil is a liar. The devil is, eh, eh, what is the matter? So the child had convulsion. So bring the child here. Carry the child, put the child. Father, thank you. Because it's not of your will that then it should perish. This child has a destiny in you. He just I just I was less than one month in Fato, but I joined the youth body. That was the first time I tasted power without shouting. My youth leader, they are folded their long sleeve. With anxiety. And God knows that if that child had come to come back to life with that kind of prayer, that become a tradition. That become a monument. That that is how it works. This, this young evangelist just spoke some few words. I tapped the child like this. This is how I heard my mouth. Now what they do here is one hour, nothing happens. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You are carrying your visa application, carry your visa application to embassy. From when they said, John edit. Are you John Edit? Yes, my Lord. You are not in court. <laughs> Sit down, come in there. You want to travel to America? What is your assignment dead? Nigeria, I do not know now. That's why they would even give you the visa, visa because they can see how anxious you are. Are you still with me? Yes, oh, come on. Are you still with me? Yes, One person came and said he's going to apply for a visa and all of that. And you know that in my own thinking, that's why some people left me and I don't care about that. You know, once you pr produce your passport, have people said, carry, go, embassy, go. The prayer will pray during service, it do for you, go. So this person brought the passport. I said, Pastor, lay your hand on it. Hush, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, bless you. May they grant you your visa in Jesus' name. Amen. On the way, on the way, he called back. I said, Pastor, I didn't remember to tell you. I said, what is that? 
I had a dream. I said, what's the dream? He said, the dream, I saw that somebody was giving me somebody that snatched it away. I said, Father, what they snatched away, return back in Jesus' name. Amen. At the embassy, as he sat, they said, I've gotten here, Pastor. I said, that is good, beautiful. That is nice. I think he lodged in a hotel the next day. He said, he said I'm there already. He said, but something is telling me that there's a force here. I said, Father, every force that is here that said the visa will not get to him, I rebuke in Jesus' name. Amen. And then as he said, they just call my name now. Wait it be this. 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 Now let you start to go look for visa. And I knew what the outcome would be. The first day I didn't hear from him. The second day I didn't hear from him. I told myself, I said, they're not given. <laughs> After one week, I tried to call it. Number was not. Whether he blacksmithed me as part of his enemies, I don't know. It was the second week and I got him. I said, ah, I didn't hear from him. He said, Pastor, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. The team pay me. I went to say, never pay you rich. Are you still here? Because you can't be praying and be anxious at the same time. Look at this. Look at Let me show you so that you don't think I'm cooking this up. Come on. Can I show you? Psalm 37 verse number 7. Oh boy. Thank you, Jesus. What do they say? Shout it. For Yahweh, then what happened? Mr. Kama, quiet your heart in his presence. Be still and know that I am God. Don't think all those people that are getting their money in the fraudulent ways. They are doing better than you know. God is cooking something for you. God is cooking something for you. God is cooking something for you. I have one of our brothers here. He has not spent a year. When is your time? I'm going to be preaching that message. When it is your time. It's not up to one year. What he has, it's not up to one month or two months. What he has done, those who have been there for two years have not done it. Boundary lines are just opening for him. Because when you go where God sent you, God will make a way for you. He parted the Red Sea because he's the one that sent them. He parted River Jordan because he's the one that sent them. He collapsed the walls of Jericho because he's the one that sent them. Where you are going now, who sent you? Finally, they will rise up and pray. Someone, God will come through for you. Yeah. How to receive help in hope. Shout this with me loud and clear. One thing, media, are you forgotten? Are you tired? Uh, the fasting and made you to sleep off? Can you give it to me, please? One to go. Confess your hope no matter the contrary happenings or circumstances. Tell your neighbor that. It's an English one, not Arabic. So look at it and tell your neighbor that. Psalm 34, verse number 12. Psalm 34, verse number 12. Please read this with me loud and clear. What do they say? Do you want to live? Is it there? Yeah, read it now. Do you want to live a long, good life? Enjoying the beauty that feeds how many days? I mean, don't mind your neighbor who is not ready. Read it. Feeds which day? day? Then what? They never speak a lie. Or allow wicked words to come from your mouth. I'm tired. I'm confused. I don't know what to do. I'm just tired. This country is a mess. I don't think I will succeed here. That's why you will never succeed. You want to live everyday life? The best way is to check what you say. It's only pastor. That's it's only, only pastor that think that nothing is wrong. Because uh, it's not, things are not hard for him. No. Because I don't buy for his water I buy. Your word can create your word. Tell your neighbor that. There's some Proverbs 15 verse number 4. The Passion Translation. It says what? When you speak healing words, you offer, order, you offer others fruit from the tree of life. But what? But on heading negative words, do nothing but crush their hopes. So be careful what you say. Psalm 141 verse number 30. Loud and clear. Read with me. Those who are reading with me. Read with me. Those of you online want to go. Read loud and clear. God, give me grace to guide my lips from speaking what is wrong. Pray that as a prayer. Shout it. Yeah, it's a prayer. Proverbs 16 verse number 24. Want to go. Read with me. Nothing is more appealing than speaking beautiful, life-giving words. For they release sweetness to our souls and inner healing to our spirit. Did you see that? Beautiful words. Mr. Come, I see you and your beautiful children. Amen. Amen. 
live the best of life. Amen. Live a higher life. Amen. You look at your children, you speak words into their life. You speak blessings over them. You say, this family, we are on our way to the top. Amen? Amen. When I say certain things today, some of my family members don't believe me anymore. Because I have been saying many, many things that have not happened yet. But I will not stop. Because words are seeds. As you say them, you plant them. They will grow one day. I refuse to say uh, the way things are going. In case anything happened to me, people should not bury me in Benin. should take me to my village. Uh, bury me near that coconut. Are you still here? I refuse to say that. Those are not the things I should be saying. Uh, the way things are, in case uh, we don't have anything again, uh, you people should remember. No, 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 no. Those are not the words you should speak. Now, for some of you, you don't even say it. Your own is worse. You keep it. It's there. And that is why you are 40, you look like 80. Because negative thought will eat you like cancer. It will make your age so, you will age so fast. Because the Bible says, a cross spirit dries up the bone. There are people carrying negative thought in their heart. You know, I was part of a committee recently. I were talking and I mentioned certain figures. I said, Pastor, you can't talk like that. I said, listen to me. This is how I'll be talking. That's why I'm the way I am. You can talk like it cannot happen. The Bible says all things are possible to him that believes. Let's pray. <laughs> Lift up your voice and shout. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I know some of you are going to be saying.